today, we're going to begin this series called The Name. And we're going to take it from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, where we talk about the names of Jesus that we find here and what they mean to us and how they help us. So read with me in Isaiah chapter 9 and verses 6 and 7. I'm going to explain to you a little bit about the theology of this, what it means, uh, the truth of it, and then we're going to talk about, for the next four weeks, these four names that God gives to Jesus. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government <clears throat> and of peace, there will be no end. And on the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. <clears throat> well, we see here that uh, when you read this and you understand what God is saying to us, it's really overwhelming. Jesus was given to us, for unto us a son is born. Unto us, a child is given. What does that mean? It shows that he loves us and that he wants to have a relationship with you. No matter where you are, no matter how far you have gone uh, from God, no matter how much you have drifted in your life, Jesus was given to us. The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. He was given to you. He was given to me. Uh, when it says that a child was born, it shows us his humanity. Jesus was God, but he was also fully human. When it says a son is born, that is a reference to the Son of Man, which shows us that he is the Messiah and that he is the Son of God. And this shows us his divinity. And, and what is so incredible about this is that he is the God-man. Um, he was in eternity past. When Jesus was born, that did not begin his existence. That began his humanity. And the truth is, Jesus lived forever in eternity past. And he became human so that you and I could be saved. So when it says that to us a child is born, a son is given, it is great peace. It is a great gift that God has given to us. The government shall be on his shoulders, shows us that he is coming again to be the king of the universe. Now, I don't know about you, <clears throat> but I'm looking forward to that day when King Jesus rules. The fact is, our hope is not in who is in the White House and who controls the Congress. Our hope is in Jesus, and one day he will come again. The government will be on his shoulders, and he is a God who offers peace. As we prayed earlier, the fact is, um, God gives us peace with him when we come into a relationship with him. The Bible tells us that he removes our sin as far as the east is from the west. And so God gives peace. He is the everlasting father. He upholds us forever. He gives eternal life. And we can always trust in him. He is just and righteous. He never fails. Never makes a mistake. He is always on time. And he always has a plan for you. I know that sometimes it doesn't seem like God is on time. But he's never late. He's never too early. He's always right on time. And he is that everlasting father. Um, he is passionate about putting people into his family. And he's passionate about you. It says the zeal of the Lord of hosts has done this. And so over the next few weeks, we're going to talk about these names of Jesus, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. So what is in a name? 
as humans, we often name a child for the hope that we see in them. My parents named me Richard. Richard, I understand, means strong. I guess they were hoping, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it means leader. They, they had hope. And so uh, that was a name given that I believe they had faith that one day God would make that come true. On my mom's side, I had a great, great, great grandpa who was named Frost Snow. I don't know what they were trying to accomplish with that name. <laughs> Frost Snow, that was his name. On my dad's side, I had a great, great grandpa, and his name was Snide Miller. Snide. And I, don't, I really don't know what they were trying to accomplish with that name. Maybe he was a snide person. But when it comes to the names of God, when it comes to the name of Jesus, these names show us his power, his love, his character, his holiness. And today, I want to talk about Wonderful Counselor. Jesus is the Wonderful Counselor. I really just want to give you two thoughts today. He's wonderful in his ways, and he's wonderful in his wisdom. <clears throat> when um, we see what God does for us, when we see that God made these promises to us, when he gave us a wonderful counselor. Now, what does it mean, the ways of God, that he's wonderful in his ways? Well, he is the only one qualified to be king. He is the everlasting father. He is the mighty God. He is the prince of peace. He's the only one qualified to be king. He's the only one qualified. And you might think that you're in control. You might think you're in control of your own destiny. You might think that you control the outcome of things, but you don't. The fact is God alone controls things. Oh, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't work or plan or uh, make preparations but it simply means that for you and me, when we try to control the outcome of things, we fail. We must trust in the wonderful ways of Jesus. Now, what does it mean that he has wonderful ways? Well, it means that he has the power to bring us into a relationship with God. And not only does he have that power, he has that power without our contributing anything to it. You say, what do you mean by that? Well, when he brings us into a right relationship with God, you don't give anything to it. You don't do anything to earn it. You just simply trust God by faith. And he does it all. He is wonderful and extraordinary and holy and powerful. And he offers us a wonderful salvation. That's what we mean by the ways of God. Let me read to you several scriptures that show us how that God, in his ways, that he is wonderful. Isaiah 25, verse 1, and then verses 6 through 9. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things. Plans formed of old, faithful and sure. Aren't you glad that God is faithful and sure in his plans? Aren't you glad that God has always, of old, had a plan for your life? He said, on this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. He's talking about heaven, the marriage supper of the Lamb here, and I'm looking forward to that. You know, I like a good meal. You probably can tell that I like a good meal. In fact, I even like a bad meal, all right? So I just like to eat. My great-grandpa, his name was William Henry Miller, and every time he ate at the end of his, the meal, he would say this, without fail, I believe that's the best I ever ate. <laughs> and so I get it honestly, but God is preparing for us a place. He is preparing for us a wonderful place that we can't even imagine. But not only that, it says that he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. 
he will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him, that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Jesus will swallow up death, and he makes a way for us. Why? He's wonderful in his ways. He is the wonderful counselor. But not only is he wonderful, but he is the counselor. What does that mean? Well, it means the wisdom of God. He's wonderful in his wisdom. He's wonderful in his plans for you and me. Um, he is wonderful, and he is filled with wisdom. This wisdom that he has, it is his extraordinary plan for humanity and for all creation. You see, Jesus came to this earth, and he had a plan. And in his wisdom, he had a way for you to be made right with God. And his plan is that plan of redemption. You can either get in on his plan or you can live by your own plan. But when you live by your own plan, you will fail. But his plan never fails. And I want to show you some verses that talk about his wonderful counselor. The word counsel or counselor refers to God's plan, God's wisdom. And sometimes that he is our representative as our heavenly lawyer. He's our counselor. He's our lawyer. He's our advocate. Psalm 33.10, the Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing, and he frustrates the plans of the people. In other words, you cannot outplan God. You can set your plans, but your plans will be frustrated. God, when we follow him, will bless. Psalm 33, 11, the counsel of the Lord stands forever, the plans of his heart to all generations. Aren't you glad that God's plans are not just for a short time, but they last forever? Isaiah 40, verse 13, can anyone tell the Lord what to do? Who can teach him or give him advice? We can't tell God what to do. Um, I've heard it said that, you know, if you want God to laugh, just tell him your plans. John 14, 16, and 17, Jesus said, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, talking about the Holy Spirit, who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him, but you know him. Because he lives with you now and later will be in you. Aren't you glad that the Holy Spirit is not only with us, but he's in us? Never leaves you. John 15, verse 26. But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. John 14, 6. And then Jesus said to him, I am the way the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Uh, we're talking about the ways, his wisdom, the fact that he is in control. First John 2, 1, my dear children, I am writing this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. Aren't you glad for that? Aren't you glad that when you fail, Jesus is there pleading your case before, G uh, before God? He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. So what's in a name? Jesus is our wonderful counselor. I hope today that you will receive him as your savior if you've not been saved. And I hope that you will stand in awe and worship him. So let's pray together today. And I realize my message has been a little bit short today because I'm, I'm sick and I'm not feeling well. But uh, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would help us. I pray that you would be our wonderful counselor. I pray that you bless us. I pray that you would be with those that need Jesus today. 
And God, I pray that they would receive you right now. Now, before we finish this prayer, I wonder if there would be anybody that would say, Pastor, I need Jesus today. If you need to receive him online, you're watching or in the room, why don't you receive him right now? Why don't you pray something like this? Dear Jesus, I believe that you are the wonderful counselor, and I am receiving you as my Savior today. I ask that you forgive me of all my sins and make me right with the Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.